It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part that I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Thanks, Dee. I think we got to give him a round of applause. Thank you. Yeah. Well, for my wedding message today, I just wanted to encourage you guys uh, with two different thoughts as you start this new season of life together. And they both come from a book of the Bible called Song of Songs or Song of Solomon. Uh, it's one of the books of wisdom, five books of wisdom. It's one of them. And it's specifically wisdom in regards to relationships and especially marriage. Uh, it's a story of a young man who pursues and dates and eventually marries a young woman. And the text is made up of dialogue that goes back and forth between the man and the woman, and sometimes their, their friends will pop in. We get all of these different perspectives of them pursuing one another. In chapter 1, the man and woman notice each other, and they quickly become infatuated with one another. And they see each other, they're very interested in one another, but the woman is nervous about it because she has some insecurities. Uh, she notices the man, very interested in the man, uh, but she's not feeling great about herself. This is what she says in verse 6. Do not stare at me because I am dark. I'm darkened by the sun. My mother's sons were angry with me and made me take care of the vineyards, and my own vineyard I had to neglect. Uh, you see, she says, I'm darkened by the sun. She uh, was working the vineyard. She was out in the fields working all day, and so she had this dark complexion, which wouldn't have been very attractive in that day. And so she's not feeling great about herself. She says, my own vineyard I couldn't take care of. Uh, and the rest of the chapter is filled with the man expressing to her how great he feels about her. Uh, he talks about the intensity of her beauty, both inwardly and outwardly. He closes uh, with this line. He says, your eyes are doves, which probably doesn't mean much to us in English. Uh, but in the Hebrew, this would have been like saying, your soul is beautiful. You know, in English, we say the eyes are a window to the soul, right? And this was him saying, your soul, who you are, I find you truly beautiful. And this is my first encouragement to both of you, that you would use your words wisely together in marriage, knowing that with them, you can build each other up in powerful, powerful ways. Her response in chapter 2, verse 1, to all of his praise that he has given her throughout chapter 1, this is what she says. I am a rose of Sharon, a lily among the valleys. Quite different than do not stare at me because I'm darkened by the sun. You know, this do not stare at me, I'm too dark has turned into I'm a beautiful rose of Sharon. She has this renewed confidence, this renewed strength in who she is. And it's directly because of how this man has made her feel, the words that he has used with her. And so, Anthony, Sarah, this is your job to one another, to encourage one another and support one another without ceasing. And Sarah, it is your job to make sure Anthony feels like a beautiful lily of the valleys <laughs> and vice versa. And the second thing I want to encourage you with has to do with conflict. And the first chapter and a half of Song of Songs is filled with this bliss. The couple is dating and they're pursuing marriage and everything is going great. Uh, but in just two chapters, conflict arises and the woman begins to hide. 
Side note for us, if it only took two chapters for the biblical example of relationship to experience conflict, chances are we might experience conflict in marriage as well. We should probably be prepared. But when this conflict...